Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna paint a red swim bait and we're gonna make something super cool out of it. So we're starting right now. When you look at this lure, you can see there's a lot of detail in the head carved out, which is very nice and we're gonna use that. But on the body, there is no detail at all. It's just a flat, blank canvas. So here on the body, we can do whatever we want. So the idea is that we're gonna use these details on the head to our advantage to make the head really stick out on this bait. So I got some paintbrush bristles here, which I just cut off a paintbrush. And so I cut these hairs off and I taped them together so I could spread them out a little bit more so we can spray paint through the hairs. So in order to paint a white mouse, we're gonna need a darker base on which the white hair is gonna stick out and create a little bit of depth. And if you look at white mice uh, reference pictures or white rats, then you can see that they're not always exactly white. Sometimes there's a little bit of gray or brown under fur, a little bit of that uh, different colors underneath that white. So we're gonna recreate that a little bit by using some of these filet cores. So I got some, I got two grays, I got a white, and I got three tones of brownish, brownish yellow. And that's what we're gonna use to create that base coat first. And for this technique, or to create some more depth now, I'm actually gonna use darkest colors first, and I'm gonna build up my lighter colors on top of that to create that depth. So I'm gonna start off with the darkest gray that I have, which is Vallejo Cold Gray. We're just gonna start randomly building up that fur. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of leather brown to create some brown hairs here and there, just randomly. Especially on the back, I want the back to be a little darker. Now I've got some Vallejo Kaki in my chamber, which is a slightly lighter brown. I'm just gonna do the same thing. And now I got Wolf Grey in my chamber, which is a lighter grey. So now our undercoat is done. Now I got Vallejo Dead White in my chamber. And now we're gonna do the final coat. All right, so now I collected some colors here that I'm gonna use for the belly. So we're gonna turn our lure upside down for a second. And normally that belly would just be hair. But in this case, because it's a mutated or a zombie mouse, I'm gonna make the belly um, hairless. So we're gonna start with the darkest color, probably, I'm not sure yet, but Probably this is gonna be the darkest one. This is blood red. Right, and now I got some flesh color in my chamber and I'm gonna outline the muscles. Right, now I will be mixing some dead white with a little bit of squid pink and some flesh to create a lighter mid-tone between that red and that flesh tone that we sprayed on there. And I mix a little bit of 40-30 with, with that. And I'm just gonna stipple some texture from that darker core towards the outside. All right, now I got some dead white in my chamber and we're gonna paint some hairs over those edges again so that the hair looks like it's going over that bald spot. I've got gory red in my chamber and we're gonna do the head in the darkest color first. So as you can see I'm really layering down that gory red a few layers so that it gets really dark and it, you get this really nice dark brownish tone which I'm looking for. 
Right, so we laid down our darkest base now, and now I'm gonna go over that with a little bit of Vallejo Bloody Red, which is a little bit of a lighter red. And because this lure has a lot of details already carved out, we're gonna use these details as a guideline to where we want it to be lighter. So all the parts that are deeper in the face, that are further away from us, those are gonna be the darkest parts. And those parts who are closer to us, so the parts that stick out a little, the muscles, the jawbone, the tip of the ears, uh, the eyebrow, all those things, they are closer to us. So those will need to be lighter so that you get that 3D feeling that it really comes to life so that you get this depth going on with the different colors. So darker parts, further away, deeper in the face, lighter parts, closer to yourself, sticking out a little bit. And I'm gonna use my detail airbrush for this, which is an Iwata Micron, which has a much finer needle, a 0.18. So this will allow me to do finer shading in smaller areas. Because I want this to be a bloody rat, so that, that head is, I want the head to be disgusting. And that's, that's my goal. So now I got Vallejo flesh color in my chamber and we're gonna highlight those areas that are red a little bit more and make them more fleshy. And we're gonna <clears throat> create a little bit more contrast between the shadows on the face and the lightest parts. Also, I want this face to be very fleshy and once I want it to be a little bit mutated and ugly. So that's why we're gonna use the flesh color and we're gonna see what kind of effect we're gonna get once we apply the flesh color. Then I'm gonna, I'll have to see for myself how I'm gonna go from there too. Alright, so like I said, I want this rat to be bloody. I want it to be yeah, really cool. So we're gonna take our game color gory red now, which is for paint brushes, not for airbrushing. And with a paintbrush, we're gonna make all those areas that we're gonna make a little bit more bloody, we're gonna make those darker by using the gory red. And I'm gonna combine I'm gonna mix a little bit of 4030 with my game color so it becomes a little bit more transparent and also I'm gonna thin it down with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna paint two front teeth on there. I'm gonna try it so you can see it. Now I've got some game color black and all those little holes we're gonna stipple those black. Now there's one more bloody thing I wanna do and that's gonna use some candy to a blood red mixed with some 4030 and with my wet brush I'm gonna go in those cracks and crevices. I went a little heavy there, but it's okay. I can live with that. It's not easy to come back from that anyways. Of course, on the mount, we're gonna do some spatters. And just splatter a little bit on there, not too much. All right, so now there's only one thing left to do on the head and because this is an albino rat or an albino mutant rat, if you will, I want that eye to be popping red. So I'm gonna use Wicked Fluorescent Red for this, but first I'm gonna make that eye a little bit white again so that we're gonna spray that fluorescent on a white base and that's gonna give us the brightest effect. So I take some Vallejo White, and even like this, it looks really cool. <clears throat> but yeah, I want it mm, 
Okay, after doubting so long, I have decided to keep the eyes white. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think the eyes should have been. Maybe they should have been fluorescent red or yellow or green or 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 or, or a darker color for for that matter. But um, when I see this and they are white, it just feels so natural and fitting with the color of the skin. It just feels so real already. And that's really nice. I really love that. Alright, so our head is finished. Now we're gonna take off our masking tape. Alright, for the wounds now I'm gonna use a paintbrush instead of an airbrush because or else we're gonna have a lot of overspray to clean up later. And I want to avoid that, so I'm gonna use a paintbrush. I'm gonna go over all the wounds with gory red and we're gonna do especially well we're gonna fill in the entire wound and if we get a little bit out of the edges that is no problem that's gonna look like blood that's coming out of the wound all right so now our gory red is dry now we're gonna use bloody red and we're gonna do the same but we're gonna stay away from the edges. We're gonna start to create the muscle that's underneath there. So for instance here you would have a front paw. So that would be a roundish, roundish muscle. Right, now I mixed some squid pink together with some red and gory red with some 40 30 and everything just to make a kind of a lighter red now i created a lighter pink with dead white and bloody red with some 40 30 and that is to create a lighter pinkish red which we're gonna do the same thing again And now we're gonna go over that with even a lighter pink, just stippling a little bit more. Now we want there to be a little bit of skin around every wound because we furry creatures often when they have wounds it's a little bit infected around the area as well. And so those infected areas you can see the skin. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a little bit of skin around the entire wound. So I got some Vallejo flesh stone here. And now I mixed up some candy to a blood red with some 4050 so it's a little bit thicker and now we're gonna do the details. Now I'm also going to try to recreate some blood that is running out of the wounds but because it's hair we cannot let it run out like we did on the face because that hair is going to guide that blood. So we're going to try to recreate that and if it doesn't really look good we don't have to worry because we're going to go over that with a little bit of white later. And now for our very last step we're gonna paint some white hairs on top of that naked neck, on top of the, those wounds and on top of the bloody red that we did in the hair. So that we push those things a little bit more back into the background. Alright guys, our red is now finished and ready for a clear coat.
Alright guys, our lure is finished and as you can see that turned out really really good. That is one ugly rat. <laughs> now the wounds really turn out very well. They got a lot of depth. The blood between the hair is really nice because we, sp we sprayed some white over that again. And also the hairs over that wound push the wounds a little bit back into the background so they do not stick out too much. And the attention is really drawn to the head because the head is naked, there's no hair on there and then with the blood that really makes the head pop from the body. And I hope this will inspire you to paint something similar or use some of these techniques in your own lure patterns. I clear coated this lure with a 2K clear coat. It is super easy to use and you can even buy it in spray cans and just spray it on there. So with a 2K clear coat you can preserve all the moving parts and easily clear coat the lure because it's really fast to apply a 2K clear coat. It goes, in my opinion, it goes much faster than applying epoxy which you have to brush on and make sure that there are no bubbles in there and everything. A 2K is just spray it on there and you're done. Just let it dry and you can go fish. Now I have spent six hours on this lure and it's totally okay to put a lot of detail and a lot of hours in you if you're painting a lure for yourself because you want to make something that you're proud of and that's totally fine. Now this was a commissioned piece and a person that paid for it knew it was going to take very long but if you want really cool results and you want a unique lure with a lot of detail in there then you have to put the time and the effort into it as well. As always I will leave a link in the description below for all the materials that I used to paint this lure. This will guide you to my webshop which is based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there you will be supporting me and my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions or you want to see me paint something or you have a question about a certain technique let me know in the comments down below and as always Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.